Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to some more time with me, Mr. Oldenburg. If you hear any noise in the background, that's you guys in the library. If you don't, you are nice and quiet. Today we're going to talk about some graphing data using ordered pairs. So yesterday we talked about a couple things. First, we had a coordinate grid, and it had some grids on it, right? We said that this little spot right here is called the origin. It is 0, 0. That is the ordered pair for it. Okay, this is where everything starts. We have numbers written on the x-axis, numbers written on the y-axis, and when we look at our ordered pairs, they go in xy format. x always comes before y in the alphabet, so it should be coming before y in ordered pairs. So with that, let's see what we can do with this. So first, in our do now, we had a small little grid and they want us to plot these four points. After we plot the four points, we have to connect the lines to see what shape we get. You should always do it in the order in which they give it, too. Don't just go all over the place. You'll see that in a second. So first, they say, let me get a cool color, A is 2, 1, which means I'm 2 on the X, which means I go right 2, up 1 on the Y. So I start in the origin, I go over 2, up one. That is point A, so I put my dot, put an A near it, and I try to keep it out of the way of the other stuff. All right, B is five, one. Go to the right, five from the origin, up one. Next, five, four. Go to the right, five, and up four. Right now I have three points, so it would be a triangle, but I have a fourth over here. Some kind of quadrilateral. I wonder what it could be. So here I'm going right two, up four. Right two, up four. Point D. Then I would use a ruler, but I don't have a ruler on this, to draw my lines straight. I go from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D back to A. Now, I have to say what kind of shape I have. Obviously, it's a quadrilateral, but I have to look at more of my properties. First of all, they're all right angles, so it's some kind of rectangle. Uh, however, when I start looking at this, I see I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They're all the same side, so it's a kind of rhombus. So if I have a rectangle and a rhombus, I have a square. That looks more like a G than a Q. All right, so we spoke today about, and yesterday, how you can use ordered pairs to make um, line charts. And the whole thing with line charts is the fact that they measure something, some kind of measure, over time. And it's always over time. You can use anything to start plotting coordinates. Here, they're using time and height. They give you a data table. And nothing here looks like an ordered pair yet. All right, it just looks like a data table. You can turn these into ordered pairs. Because I have the time, and it's measured in days. We should always write what we measure it in. And then I have height in centimeters. So the first thing I would do is label my chart. I go down to my graph. Here it is. The first thing, I have a title. I know it's about a plant's growth. Then my y-axis would be the height and in centimeters. You should always write what the height measure is. And the reason I'm going to do this is because your height or your, whatever measure you're going to measure will always be on the y-axis. Time will always be on your x-axis because time always goes forward. We can never go back, no matter how much science fiction we read. So... Time in days would be written. I can now use time as my x and height as my y. So now this would become 1, 4, like here, 3, 8. And what does it say? It says on day 1, it was 4 centimeters. On day 3, it was 8 centimeters. On day 5, it was 10 centimeters, and so on. So I would go to my graph. I would start at the origin. I would go over one day 
up four centimeters, put a point. Then I would go to three, not two. Don't mess that up. So I go one, two, three, and then I have to go up eight. One, two, three, four. Well, they did every two. The, the Y interval is a two, so you know it's only four lines. Don't get fooled and always make sure you check. So in three, eight, I would put my dot there. The next one, five, 10, I'd go over five and up 10. Okay, and I would do this for all of them. Then you would connect the dots and you don't start that in the origin, you start where that other line started. You would put a ruler in between the two points and draw a straight line. Again, I don't have a ruler, I'm doing the best I can, but as you can see in this example, they show you how to do it nice and neat. You only do two points at a time and you end up getting a line chart and you can see where you have different slopes. You could see where you have better increases, things like that. And then just like when you see all those funny commercials, you might see, you know, oh yeah, we're making money, making money, making money. And then they hired Mr. Oldenborg and oh, our stocks plummeted. Terrible. Okay. Natalie is graphing point T at one eight. Should she move to the right three units or up three units? Well, if we remember, we have X and then Y. Well, where's the eight? It's in the Y coordinate. Y goes up and down. We would move up eight units. All right. We're not going to do two because I don't even know what they're talking about with C and D. So let's move on. We're going to... Talk about the graph. So, here we have our graph. They want us to plot the points. First, they want E, which is at 1, 3. Again, starting at the origin, I move over 1, up 3, and I would plot E. F is 4, 4. We never get du doubles wrong. Move over 4, up 4. G is 5, 2. I would move to the right 5 and up 2. And H, 0, 2. I do not move anywhere to the right, and I just go up 2. And again, this is just more practice. Uh, so what I will do is quietly um, plot these for you. Just stay with whatever number. I'll do them in order and maybe you wanna play some beautiful music in the background. I'm going to skip down to 14 for a minute. Notice this one, I stay on the X, but I don't go anywhere up because it's a zero. And I think I'm going to stop here because it's getting repetitive and I think you get the idea. All right, last two questions I wanted to talk about. I love these questions. First, how is graphing zero two different than graphing two zero? Well, in this one, we are not moving to the right. But in this one, we are moving to the right two places. In the first one, we are moving up two places, but in the second, we are not moving up at all. You must compare x to x and y to y. The last question says point C is located at 10, 3, and D is located at 4, 3. They want to know the horizontal distance between the two points. Well, horizontal is on the x-axis. So I look at just my x's. I have 10 and 4. What's the distance between? Well, 10 minus 4 equals 6. So there's 6 units between the two points. I could have said, what's the vertical distance, right? Then I would use 3 and 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So there is no distance difference between the two.
You're going to have to make sure you pay attention to questions like that. They will be popping up, okay? Hope you enjoyed this. Another 10-minute video. Sweet.